Hello everyone, welcome to my channel. Now in this video, I'm going to discuss a few VIVA questions for your practical examinations. Now basically in your VIVA, you'll be asked questions based on the experiment or the activities which you'll be allotted during the examination. Now in this video, I'm going to discuss a few VIVA questions from the experiments based on the topic electricity. Now based on Ohm's law, you have one experiment wherein you'll be determining the unknown resistance from, from the current voltage graph and the other one is the potential divider okay now in these experiments you may be asked like what is the statement of ohm's law along with the conditions okay so condition is that the temperature should remain constant okay what is the effect of temperature on resistance of conductors now for conductors as you increase the temperature the resistance also increases for semiconductors the resistance decreases with increase in temperature next is is ohm's law valid for diodes and transistors no ohm's law is valid only for ohmic conductors diodes and transistors are non ohmic conductors so for them ohm's law is not valid okay next is basic ideas about the circuit okay so you may be asked to draw the circuit or explain the components in the circuit how emitter and voltmeter are connected in the circuit now emitter is a current measuring device and it is connected in series Voltmeter is a potential measuring device and it is always connected in parallel. Okay. Now, what is the least count of the emitter and the voltmeter that you can observe from the measuring instrument? Okay. What is the nature of the VI graph? Now, if it is an ohmic conductor, then the VI graph will be a straight line passing through origin. What is the function of rheostat? Now, rheostat is also called variable register. So, by varying the resistance, the potential changes and we get different readings. Okay. What material is chosen for rheostat wire and why? Okay, so rheostat wire it is usually made up of constant 10 and why? Because it has low temperature coefficient of resistivity. So if the, there is a change in temperature, there won't be much variation in the resistance. Okay. Names of substances whose resistance decreases with increase in temperature. Now there are the semiconductors, silicon, germanium. For them, if you increase the temperature, the resistance will decrease okay then what precautions to be taken while performing the experiments okay so these precautions are like uh, the ends the wire ends need to be cleaned properly the connections should be tight those things you are expected to explain why emitter is connected in series and voltmeter in parallel in a circuit okay now emitter is a low resistance device and it is used to measure current okay hence it is connected in series voltmeter it is a high resistance device and it is connected in parallel because in parallel you have same potential okay so it is for this reason voltmeter is connected in parallel so basic reason is voltmeter is a high resistance device and emitter is a low resistance device okay then you have why thick copper wires are used as connecting wires in experiment now thick wires are used because see resistance it is inversely proportional to cross sectional area so if you are using thick wires that means the resistance will be low okay it is for this purpose copper wires thick wires are used how is resistance of a conducting wire depends on its length and cross sectional area so r is equal to rho l by a if area is kept constant r is proportional to l if length is kept constant r is inversely proportional to area you must be aware of the physical quantities, units of the physical quantities involved in the experiment. The teacher may also ask you the units of the various quantities involved. So next is the topic meter bridge. Now they may ask you state Wheatstone bridge principle. Then why the instrument is called meter bridge? Okay. Now the instrument is called meter bridge because you have a one meter long wire. Okay. What is the function of galvanometer? The function of galvanometer is to detect the direction of current. Okay. Why the balance point should be obtained near middle region in the meter bridge wire? Because in the middle region, the meter bridge is most sensitive. Okay. What is the alternate name of meter bridge? Alternate name of meter bridge is slide wire bridge. Because in this, we slide a jockey over the wire to measure the reading. What would happen if position of battery and galvanometer are interchanged? Now, if the position of battery and galvanometer are interchanged, the balancing length will remain invariant. You will get the balancing length at the same position. 
what is the material of wire of meter bridge now it is again constant 10 okay now constant 10 is used because it has low temperature coefficient of resistance okay can a meter bridge be used to measure very low or very high resistance no okay the answer is no you can't measure very low or very high resistance using meter bridge okay general idea about the circuit you must be able to draw the circuit and you must be able to explain the components used in the circuit okay then you may also be asked like general idea about sources of errors and precautions what are the sources of errors and what are the precautions involved in conducting the experiment so next is what is a potentiometer so potentiometer is a potential measuring device what is the advantage of potentiometer over voltmeter okay now voltmeter see voltmeter measures the potential potentiometer also measures the potential but the advantage is potentiometer can measure the potential without drawing any current from the circuit across which the measurement is taken that is you can use potentiometer to measure emf of a cell but you can't use voltmeter to measure the emf voltmeter will measure the terminal potential difference similarly you cannot use voltmeter to measure the internal resistance of a cell but you can use potentiometer for that purpose so these are the advantages of potentiometer over voltmeter okay then the principle of potentiometer that is the potential drop across a given length of potentiometer wire is proportional to the length across which the balancing length is measured okay then next is the sensitivity of potentiometer how can you increase the sensitivity of a potentiometer okay the sensitivity can be increased by increasing the length of the potentiometer wire okay so what are the applications of potentiometer applications of potentiometer are uh, comparing the emf of cells and determination of internal resistance of cell okay then you may be asked some standard definitions like definition of emf definition of terminal potential difference emf is the potential difference across the two terminals of a cell in an open circuit terminal potential difference is the potential difference across the two terminals of a cell in a closed circuit now internal resistance is the resistance offered by the electrolyte of the cell to the passage of electric current okay why the potentiometer wire should have high specific resistance and low temperature coefficient of resistance now high specific resistance implies high resistance of the wire okay and low temperature coefficient of resistance implies that when the temperature changes the variation in resistance will be less so dependence of temperature on the resistance dependence of resistance on temperature will be less okay so you will be able to conduct the experiment without much error can you measure emf of a cell using voltmeter the answer is no because when you connect voltmeter it is going to draw current from the cell and if current is being drawn from the cell then the potential drop across the cell will not be the emf but it will be the terminal potential difference why should the emf of the battery in the potentiometer circuit be greater than the other cells it is because otherwise the balancing length will not be obtained within the potentiometer wire okay so it is for this reason the battery of the potentiometer must be greater than the other cells which are used for like uh, when you are measuring the internal resistance of the cell or when you are comparing the emf of the cells so under the topic magnetism we have two experiments tracing of magnetic lines and ratio of magnetic and geometric length okay now you may be asked to define some standard terms like magnetic pole magnetic meridian geographic meridian magnetic field neutral point okay then you may be asked what are the general properties of a bar magnet okay the most essential pro property that you must say that see bar magnet when it is suspended freely it will align itself around the north south direction of earth okay state the properties of magnetic lines of force these you have already studied in theory okay why magnetic lines of force can never intersect this is also one of the property magnetic lines of force never intersect because the tangent to the magnetic lines of force give the direction of magnetic field now if they intersect then at the point of intersection you will have more than one tangents which will imply that they, you will have more than one direction of magnetic field okay repulsion is the surest test for magnetism because magnet will attract any magnetic material it can also attract a magnet but magnet 
will repel only a magnet. It will not repel a magnetic material. So repulsion is the surest test for magnetism. Where is the location of pole in a bar magnet? So it is slightly inside the magnet. What is the purpose of thread and the needle in the experiment? Okay. So this thread and needle, they are used to mark the magnetic meridian. Why does the direction of compass needle reverse when it crosses the neutral point? Because on one side of the neutral point, there is a magnetic field of the magnet. On the other side of the magnet, the, there is a magnetic field of the earth. Okay. Then you may be asked to identify the location of neutral point when the magnet is north pole facing north and when the magnet is in the position of north pole facing south. Okay. So these are few of the questions that can be asked in your viva examinations. So my idea is not that you should, you should by heart these questions and only these questions will be asked. But this is just to boost your preparation. Okay. So my best wishes for your for your practical examination as well as your theory examinations.